Doing these nine things is essential for your success in IELTS Academic Writing Task 1. And some of this advice is well known, but may be interpreted incorrectly, which leads to lost marks rather than gained. So let me show you what exactly you need to do to improve your score. It's Asya here. Let's get started. Let's start from the very beginning. Paraphrase the task sentence in your introduction. This is the simplest and easiest way to begin your report. Let's say the task is the charts below show the average consumption of three nutrients by adults in the UK. All of these nutrients may be unhealthy if eaten too much. Each pie chart shows one nutrient, sodium saturated fat and added sugar. And what percentage of it people eat with their breakfast, lunch, dinner and snacks? All you need is to paraphrase this task. So instead of saying the charts below show, we write the three pie charts give information about. Next, the average consumption of three nutrients by adults in the UK becomes the proportion of sodium saturated fat and added sugar in the typical meals of UK adults. Very close. And the second sentence. All of these nutrients may be unhealthy if eaten too much. We actually have a more formal version of it in the introduction. Excessive consumption of any of those nutrients is considered to negatively affect one's health. You see, the meaning is the same, just words are slightly different. In your next sentence, write an overview. A lot of students have heard that they need it, but let me show you a very common problem. Here is an overview of our task. People eat the most sodium and saturated fat at dinner, where most of their sugar is consumed with snacks. It's a beautiful complex sentence with a great linker while showing a soft contrast. A good overview? No, it's not. Why? Because where is breakfast? Where is lunch? From this overview, it feels like they don't exist. You should cover all the trends and all the groups of data. Let's try again. Overall, the first two meals of the day eaten by adults in the UK are relatively balanced and healthy, whereas dinner contains the most sodium and saturated fat. Most of the added sugar is in snack foods. Now it covers all the meals and all the nutrients. That's what we need. There are many different ways to write your overview and your report more generally. There is no single correct way. For example, let me show you another version of this overview. But there is one mistake or one weakness. So. Think about what you would change here. The first two meals of the day, breakfast and lunch, appear to be quite healthy, with a relatively even distribution of nutrients. Dinner and snacks are less balanced, with elevated fat content in the former and added sugar in the latter. The information is good, the language is impressive, but did you get the feeling that the writer jumped from one sentence to the next? That's because the second sentence contrasts the first, but there was no linker to warn us about it. Use linking words. A good one here would be on the other hand, which we use at the beginning of a sentence or even a new paragraph to show a contrast. The first two meals of the day appear to be quite healthy. On the other hand, dinner and snacks are less balanced and so on. In the previous example, we used while and whereas in the middle of the sentence. Here is what's tricky about the linking words. Naturally, we tend not to use enough connectors. And uh, as an English learner, you may not know enough to pick the perfect connector for each situation. 
but some test takers learn them and then try too hard and overuse them. Both will be punished. Have a look at the IELTS band descriptors examiners use. Band 5 in coherence and cohesion is very clear. There may be limited or overuse of cohesive devices with some inaccuracy. So clearly you need to use not too many, not too few and use them accurately without mistakes. And of course, cohesive devices are not just linkers, but also pronounce it this and references this method, this idea. And in my courses, we look into all of them and students even get a PDF list of linkers for each situation to learn. It's that important. So make sure you learn your linkers. Now, have a look at this sentence from body paragraphs. At breakfast, people typically consume 13% of their sodium, 16% of saturated fat, and 16% of added sugar. A good sentence? I mean, it's correct, but it's just a description of the chart. If you do this throughout your report, it may be seen as this. The recounting of detail is mainly mechanical. Then five in task achievement. Remember the question? Summarize the information. Make comparisons. It doesn't say describe what you see. So don't just describe, analyze. Like here, a typical breakfast is the lightest meal of the day. So I'm explaining what I found out. And now I need to give some figures to prove that this statement is true, which contains between 13 and 16% of each nutrient. And it's not important which is 13 and which is 16 because the numbers are so close. So I'm not spending time on this. Another thing I've just mentioned that's important is to make comparisons. By saying that breakfast is the lightest meal, we compare it to other meals. Here is another example. Out of all the meals, dinner contains the largest proportions of sodium and saturated fat, 42 and 39% of daily intake, respectively. Out of all the meals, the largest proportions. So these phrases show us a very clear comparison. And by the way, the last word, respectively, it means in the same order as something was mentioned. So sodium was mentioned first, it's 42%, and fat was mentioned later, so it's 39%. And if you'd like to read the full sample answer to this task, you can download it in the video description box below. In the meantime, let's have a look at some other tasks and tips. Have you seen tasks with a chart and a table or two charts? There's a lot of information and you need to select the most important bits, the key features. And that's exactly what the task says. Describe the key features. What are those? Let's have a look at the line graph. It covers a time period from 1920 to 2019. Like in any story, we want to know where it starts and where it ends. Also, 1960 stands out because that's where the numbers peaked. Here is how it put it into writing. The start. In 1920, the average British woman gave birth to approximately two children while the Kazakhstani average was around 3.5. And now let's describe the first part of our trend. In both countries, the birth rate continued to increase until the 1960s, at which point it peaked at around 2.7 and 4.5 children per woman, respectively. And now the second part. Between 1960 and 2019, the numbers generally declined, with the end of the period displaying a rate of approximately 1.8 children per woman in the UK 
and 3 in Kazakhstan. Just as we discussed before, I present the trend and then give some numbers to support my description. And when it comes to scoring your answer, how well you describe the data and how well you organize your answer to make it easy to understand together determine half of your score. The other half depends on your vocabulary and grammar. And one of the former examiners on our team told me that he's seen quite a lot of answers where students' lexical resource and grammar were probably good enough for a band 7, but they tried to show off so much that their accuracy dragged them down to a 6. And here comes an often misinterpreted piece of advice. Avoid word repetition. Some go as far as to say that you must not repeat any words at all and use synonyms every time. But in case of the task about children in the UK and Kazakhstan, that would lead us to synonyms like children, kids, juveniles, offspring, minors, teenagers. Which ones would you use here? The truth is, the words juveniles, offspring, minors and teenagers all have different meanings. For example, the word juvenile is usually used in the legal context, like juvenile offenders or juvenile crime. So women don't give birth to juveniles. The word kids is similar to children, but it's too informal for academic task one. Similarly, it's not easy to replace the word women. Let me show you how to deal with it. While the Kazakhstani average was around, at which point it peaked, the numbers generally declined. Approximately, children, the first sentence is very straightforward. The average British woman gave birth to two children. No juveniles, no ladies, women and children. Then I changed the subject. The birth rate continued to increase and peaked. This is a different grammatical structure, so the sentence sounds very different. But then I repeat our keywords, children per woman. And that's fine. In the next one, I again talk about trans rather than women. The numbers generally declined. This way we have a variety despite repeating the keywords, saying that there were some synonyms used in this report. Women were referred to as Kazakhstani average or women in Kazakhstan and their UK counterparts. And this one is more straightforward, females. Similarly, when we're talking about having children in our context, we can say giving birth to children or more formally childbearing or first-time motherhood when describing the age of having the first child. So yes, you should use synonyms when you can, but also don't be afraid to repeat your keywords several times and try to use different types of sentences which will naturally call for different vocabulary. And of course, showing a variety of grammatical structures is good for your score. The next piece of advice you may often hear is use complex sentences. Just like with your vocabulary, you need to find a balance between complexity and accuracy. And students often overestimate how much complexity they need. Sure, it's great to write sentences like this. Over time, a general trend of deferring childbearing to a later age and having fewer children overall can be observed in both countries. Although women in Kazakhstan had their first child earlier, and had more children than their UK counterparts. But let's be honest, can you write like this? All this is a single sentence and it's highly complex. So if all you need is a band seven, 
and you don't yet have native fluency, don't be afraid to take it a step down. Like in this example, over time, both countries have seen a trend of women waiting longer to have children and having fewer children overall. However, in Kazakhstan, females start having children earlier and have more than those in the UK. Now we have two sentences and the vocabulary is more straightforward. That's what you need. The next tip is to prepare for each type of task. In your task one, you may get pie charts, a bar chart, line graph, table, map or diagram. You should learn what's special about each of them and practice writing your answers. For in-depth preparation, learn how to analyze the data, what to write about in each paragraph of your report, and how to meet all the requirements. We cover all this step by step in my online courses, which can help you prepare in less time and achieve a higher score. I'll link them in the description. And don't forget to download the sample answer from today's lesson there too. And if you'd like to see how to write a full report on the line graph and table we've just seen, watch this lesson here. And thank you so much for watching me today. Good luck with your preparation and your exam. Bye!